If you haven't done so yet, make sure you pause the video and attempt this question on your own before listening on. In part A, we are asked to draw the forces that are acting on the block in the directions along and perpendicular to the incline, and then later determine the acceleration. We'll begin with the perhaps most obvious force, and that would be the force of gravity, which is pulling the block straight down. And so we can draw a force vector that points straight down. And then the only other force that's acting on the block is the so-called normal force. And that results from the incline actually pushing back against the block as the block pushes into the incline. So we're going to have a second force vector that points in this manner. And we want to make sure that when we draw that normal force that it's actually perpendicular to the surface of the incline. So if you look at the surface of the incline over here, if you're going to draw a line that's perpendicular to it, you would draw a line basically like that, and that would form a nice 90 degree angle. That's what we mean by perpendicular. So just make sure that you point your normal force in that direction, and we can go ahead and label these two forces. Now, we're going to actually have to take the gravitational force and break it into what are called components. And the reason for that is because we have to have our forces directed along and perpendicular to the incline. But right now, this gravitational force is neither along nor perpendicular to the incline. So what we'll do is draw the components of the gravitational force in the appropriate manner. And one of the components of the gravitational force turns out to point in this direction right here. This would be the component that's perpendicular to the incline. And so we can label that with a force vector. And then there is a component that's parallel to the incline. And that would be directed in this fashion right here. And hopefully you can see that that is indeed parallel to the surface of the incline. And we can put a little arrowhead on it to show that it's pointing down the incline. So these are the two components. And what we want to do is come up with expressions for those components. And to do that, we want to mark this angle right here. And it turns out through the wonders of geometry that this angle right here is going to be the same as this angle here. That's difficult probably to see, but that is definitely the case. So we're just going to mark that as theta. And our goal is to find an expression for this component here and then the other component. Now this component is adjacent to this angle that we mark theta. So if we were trying to decide between sine and cosine, we would choose cosine because the cosine contains the adjacent in its formula. So again, this component right here will be adjacent. And the way to represent that would be fg times the cosine of that angle. And then this component right here, which is opposite to the angle, would involve the sine. So we'd, we would have fg times the sine of the angle theta. Now, once we have those two components, what we can do is actually get rid of the original gravitational force. We're not, to, that's not to say that gravity is not existing, of course, but we just want to make sure that we're representing these forces along the incline as well as perpendicular to the incline, as the question stated. And so the two components that we're interested in are the one that's perpendicular right here and then the one that's along the incline. Most people will move this fg sine theta up so that it's actually acting at the center of the block. So we can go ahead and do that. And so this would be the final free body diagram. Now we have to determine the acceleration. And to do that, we can use Newton's second law, which is the sum of the forces equals mass times acceleration. And you got to be careful when you do this. You want to apply Newton's second law in the x direction and y directions separately. So for example, the x direction would be parallel to the incline. And there's only one force acting in that direction. It's the fg sine theta. So we can go ahead and plug in fg sine theta and that's the only force, again, that's acting in the so-called x direction. And if we wish, we can call down the incline the positive direction and then up the incline the negative direction. Those choices are arbitrary. And so for this question, we can just make sure to call this positive and the other way negative. We then set that equal to the mass times the acceleration. And what's interesting is we will see that the mass will cancel because fg is equal to mg. So we can replace fg with mg. And then we can see mass appears on both sides. So if we divide both sides by the mass, it cancels out. And we can see that the acceleration is simply g sine theta. So all we have to do is plug in g as well as the angle. And we can punch that in, make sure your calculator is in the degree mode. And when we do that, we get about 3.35 meters per second squared. And since acceleration is a vector, that means we have to include its direction. And we can see from the diagram that that acceleration would be down the ramp. And so this would be the correct answer for the acceleration of part A of this question.
Now for part B, the free body diagram is basically going to be the same. The only thing that we have to include is kinetic friction. And so as the block slides down the ramp, kinetic friction will attempt to oppose that motion, meaning that it will point up the ramp to try to slow down the acceleration of the block. And so we could label a force pointing up the ramp and we'll mark it as FK which is the kinetic frictional force. So this would be the free body diagram for part B. We can next turn to Newton's second law once again in the x direction to determine the acceleration of this block. We have two forces acting in the x direction. It's the Fg sine theta, which is pointing in the positive direction. So we could include positive Fg sine theta. And then we have the kinetic frictional force, which is pointing up the ramp. And as we've indicated, that's the negative direction. So you have to make sure you put a minus Fk here. Now, as before, we'll replace Fg with Mg, since that's the expression for the gravitational force. And then for Fk, we're going to replace that with the coefficient of kinetic friction times the normal force. Now, next, let's discuss the normal force. If we go back to the free body diagram, we can see that the normal force is pointing in the positive y direction, and then Fg cos theta is pointing in the negative y direction. Because this block is not accelerating in either of those directions, that means that the normal force must be equal in magnitude to Fg cos theta. In other words, the forces basically balance each other out so that the block does not accelerate up in the y direction or down in the y direction. So we're going to replace Fn with Fg cos theta, again, because they're equal in magnitude. So let's make that substitution right now. And then as before, for Fg, we can replace that with Mg. And if we look carefully at these three terms, we're going to see that the mass appears in all three. So if we divided each term by the mass m, it would cancel out. And that tells us that the acceleration is simply g sine theta minus the coefficient of kinetic friction times g cos theta. And if you wanted to get fancy, you could actually factor a g out of that. So you'd have g multiplied by the sine of theta minus mu k times cos theta. So that would be the expression for the acceleration. You can go ahead and plug in 9.8 for g and then 20 for theta. And when you type that all in with your calculator in degree mode, you should get about 1.97 meters per second squared for the acceleration. And once again, the box will be accelerating down the ramp. Notice that the acceleration has a smaller value than it did in part A, which makes sense because in part B, there is friction, which is tending to slow down the acceleration of the block. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, please click the thumbs up and also subscribe so you can stay tuned for similar videos. Remember that you can send in your own question to the email address that is shown on the screen, and I'll do my best to post the answer to it on YouTube.